Rena has been unique uh, in defining a business model uh, that works with open source. Many open source companies will say, hey, I have this open source project, but I can't really sell it because it's free, so let me add some proprietary extensions or management tools or things like that on top. Red Hat's taken a very different approach. I think the thing we recognized early on was that the power of the open source development model, which is thousands of people, rapid iteration. You know, there's a saying in open source, we never fix bugs, you fix it in the next release, but you release early, you release often. And so the, the very things that make open source a powerful development model make it virtually impossible to implement in an enterprise, right? So let me take Linux, because it's a simple example in our, our largest product. You know, we talk about the power of Intel enabling their chips and all these people putting in patches and finding bugs. That's great upstream, but if you're the New York Stock Exchange and you put a many tens of millions of dollar trading platform on top of Linux, the last thing you want to do is have Linux change every day. And Linux does change every day. So a key thing that Red Hat does, once every two years we freeze the spec, right? We move those bits over and we say, we're going to commit to supporting those for 10 years. But if you really think about what that means, Three years from now, when Intel is enabling a new chip in the upstream kernel, or somebody's patching a bug or doing a security update, we have to track back this three-year-old kernel and say, wow, is this relevant? Let me enable the hardware, let me fix this bug, let me do the security update, without ever breaking binary compatibility. And if you think about a 10-year life cycle, when we get sub-releases, any point in time, we're supporting 72 kernels. Right? So that's real value that no one else does. The open source community isn't doing that. right? We're, so the simple thing I say that Red Hat does is we take the power of a truly disruptive development model and we make it consumable for traditional enterprise uh, for mission critical applications. And we're the only company that's figured out that model. I think that's why we're uniquely successful. Uh, we've been in the virtualization uh, area for uh, a couple of years and you know, we, it looks a lot like Linux. So big established category with a big established uh, player or in it. And we've taken the same approach we did with Linux, which is by leveraging the power of open source. In this case, our, our virtualization, our hypervisor is built into Linux. We get the power of all the hardware enablement work going on uh, in Linux is we have a far superior offering in terms of performance. So the same way that we started off going to banks and, and uh, trading platforms of people who needed performance uh, out of their operating system. We're now uh, have entered the, the virtualization market and getting a significant uptake for people who have huge IO uh, requirements or really uh, dense uh, uh, machines. So the number of virtual instances, uh, as you get high densities, we have huge performance advantages versus VMware. Storage, uh, we're convinced, is going to be Huge. I, I will actually argue over the medium term, meaning over the next decade, it very well could be larger than Linux. Um, there is an explosion of data, an absolute explosion uh, of, of data, primarily unstructured data because you know every phone now is this mega collection device of pictures and video, etc. Presentations that companies do internally now and email through the email system uh, are, you know, went from being kilobytes to megabytes and, you know, will continue to expand. So, you know, with this explosion of data, explosion of need to store data, right? The problem is traditional storage solutions are, we call them tin wrapped software, right? They're appliances. And appliances are, look a lot like the Unixes of old, right? They are expensive and they're not very flexible. So the two uh, real advantages of our storage solution is it's software only, right? So it is a software-based file system, which first off means that you are free to choose whatever hardware you want underneath. You can use commodity servers, load them up with as many terabytes of disk space as you want. The second benefit is by being software-based, you actually can take advantage of cloud computing, right? The problem is when you have an appliance, if you're going to all of a sudden say, I want to run this on Amazon. Well, what are you going to do, FedEx your NAS box and ask them to plug it in? Right? By having a software-only storage solution, we have a lot of customers today who, 
uh, will use the system when they need excess capacity, they can spool it up as virtual instances on Amazon, expand the, what their application sees as the amount of storage they have, and then when the application doesn't need the storage, can, can spool right back off of Amazon. The application never even needs to know, shouldn't need to know. Our strong belief is if clouds develop in a way where each cloud has its own set of APIs, and therefore applications have to write to a single cloud, you've lost all the flexibility that people think of as cloud. I mean, Amazon's a great partner, so I don't mean to beat them up, but if you go to Amazon and write to their APIs, you're never moving that application off of Amazon. You can't, right? So we've had a significant focus through myriad products, projects, um, programs, to say what we really need to have, and we call it, we talk about open hybrid clouds, what we talk about is application mobility. Developers need to be able to write an application once, and feel confident that it can run in any environment. Uh, cloud forms. Uh, people often think of cloud forms, as, which is a product of ours for application management of being infrastructure as a service. It's actually not. We specifically put it above infrastructure as a services because re realistically, Amazon exists, right? It, it's probably going to stay there. VMware exists, right? It's probably going to stay there. OpenStack exists, has massive momentum. So at minimum, there's going to be three infrastructure as a service paradigms out there. You know, Red as a participant, and we've announced that we will support an uh, OpenStack, an enterprise OpenStack. So yes, we will play in that space, but more importantly for our customers, is we can't get our customers to say, well, you can only play in that space. So CloudForms is a product that, that is specifically designed, knowing that there'll be multiple infrastructure as a service, that says, manage your portfolio of applications, and you can deploy that on a VMware environment, on an OpenStack environment, on Amazon, you know, any others as we add support for more and more environments. So basically to make application mobility real, it's projects, it's products, and it's programs like the Certified Cloud Provider Program. And so we're doing all of those things, but it all comes back around to making sure enterprises have flexibility to run their applications anywhere. Because if we get into a mode where you say, I wrote this for a VMware environment, well, now you're stuck. You're never running it on Amazon or any other. If you write it for Amazon, you're stuck. We've got to make sure people write applications or developers write applications in a way using a, uh, a set of APIs that truly are free and open and can run across multiple uh, environments. And that's really what we're driving towards.